again from Chisholm, Chisholm, and Kilpatrick. I'm Emma Peterson, Managing Attorney. A compensation and pension exam for post-traumatic stress disorder is a crucial step in the VA claims process. Here are some key points you should know about C&P exams for PTSD. The main goal of a PTSD C&P exam is to confirm the diagnosis of PTSD, determine if the condition is service-connected, and assess the severity of the condition and establish the appropriate disability rating, which affects the amount of compensation you will receive. Don't be alarmed if you don't get a psychiatrist for the exam. VA may select from a number of types of mental health professionals to conduct the C&P exam. So what can you expect on exam day? The first thing that may happen before the exam even starts is that you are given something called the PCL-5, which is a short test meant to show the presence and severity of your PTSD symptoms. During the exam itself, the examiner will establish your PTSD diagnosis using the criteria outlined in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, or DSM-5. The examiner may complete something called a Disability Benefit Questionnaire, or DBQ, and they may conduct a test called the CAPS-5. I won't describe those here for the sake of time, but we do have other videos and resources specifically on those assessments, and they're worth re researching. The examiner will also review your medical records, focusing on things like hospitalizations and outpatient care, the frequency, severity, and duration of your symptoms, any medications and treatments that you're taking and their effectiveness, and also any complaints that you might have subjectively. One of the most important things that needs to be established is your stressor or the in-service event that led to the development of your PTSD. The examiner will also evaluate the impact of PTSD on your life, including how you function in your job and relationships, any legal history you might have, educational accomplishments and work history, They'll also look at if any substance use is happening, history of violence, and suicide attempts. So what can you do to prepare for the exam? First, let's talk about documentation. You should bring the following items to your exam, if at all possible. Evidence from private physicians, including letters and medical records, and notes about your condition and how it impacts your daily life and activities. You should consider bringing a witness. Someone like a spouse or a close friend can do two things for you. They can verify the quality of the examination and second, provide additional insight into the impact that PTSD has had on your life. A final piece of exam day advice, be honest and detailed in your responses. It's normal to want to minimize symptoms, to avoid skepticism or overstate things to be sure the examiner doesn't miss them. But VA can use any inaccuracies against you. Describe specific factual ways that PTSD affects your life. And as mentioned earlier, write them out ahead of time if that makes it easier. Now, let's talk about what happens after the exam. First, immediately after the exam, you and any witness will be, you brought should document the exam as best you can. Ensure you know the examiner's credential and describe moments where the examiner might have skipped important questions, cut you off, failed to write things down, or seemed to reach an opinion too soon. This can all be helpful if you need to challenge the exam results down the road. Next, after a couple of weeks, you can request a copy of the examiner's report for your records. This can also be helpful if there's a hearing regarding your claim. So that's what we have to share today about CMP exams for PTSD. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, feel free to give it a like so others can find it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and check out our blog at cck-law.com. Take care.